How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be talking about the drain free double incision mastectomy technique that I got from Dr. Alan Doolin at the American Institute of Plastic Surgery in Plano, Texas. However, the no drains technique is available throughout the United States and it's offered by a variety of surgeons and usually they follow a similar technique. Not all of them are the same, but they follow enough of a similar technique that when I explain to you the technique I got, you can apply it to the other ones that you might be looking at. Now I also really, really want to emphasize the fact that getting drains, getting no drains, it is kind of up to you on what you want. I specifically chose getting no drains because of some of the benefits it provides, but it also has drawbacks. The same thing goes with drains, that drains have benefits, but it also has drawbacks as well. One surgeon who provides no drains might not have the best expertise on contouring a masculine shape that you desire compared to another surgeon who does provide drains but has an aesthetic appearance post-surgery that you desire. So really figure out your pros and cons on whether or not you should get drains but I am sharing this video because I don't think there's a lot of medically inept people describing a no drains technique on the internet and that's why I want to provide it. And every surgeon will say their technique is the best. But honestly, a no drains technique follows a similar principle universally through almost every single surgeon. But they make little tweaks and changes here and there so that they can market it as their own unique flavor of a no drains technique. And of course, when I talk to my surgeon about his method, he only gave me enough information so that he doesn't reveal too many of his secrets. Which honestly, plastic surgeons creating their own patented versions, secret versions of techniques is a little bit problematic and we can get into that in another video. But today's video is actually going to be me explaining how the no drains technique works. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually explain the no drains technique to you as described by my surgeon, Dr. Alan Doolin at the American Institute for Plastic Surgery, and then talk about the pros and cons. So this is how the no drains technique goes. The surgery in itself is a double incision. So if you have smaller breasts or a smaller chest size, you don't have to worry about the drains altogether, but the larger majority of trans mask people don't have an A cup, especially if you're a person of color we tend to have larger chests. So we almost always have to get a double incision mastectomy, which is what I needed because I had big boobies. And the drawback to a double incision mastectomy, if you ignore the large bilateral scars that you get, is the fact that you will also need to have drains in place. And drains, when I was doing my search, can impede on your productivity post-surgery. And when I was going to have my surgery scheduled. I'm a medical student. I'm always on my feet. I'm always doing things. I'm also an advocate. So I'm always doing photo sheets, photo shoots, this, that, and there. So I needed something that allowed me to be able to be up and going and not take too many breaks. And I was also doing a full-time research position in addition to a full-time tutoring position. So I needed something that will let me be able to move around freely without letting, without having to take breaks to um, let my drains, you know, empty my drains. So I need, I, I was looking for something that would let me not necessarily recover quicker because I think the recovery process for both of them are pretty much the same, but will allow me to be more, will allow me to have a little bit more movement post-surgery than drains. And talking to my trans mask friends who have also gotten top surgery with drains, they've noted that the pain with drains tends to be higher. They said the drains were the most painful thing for them during the whole recovery process. And for me, I'm a bit of a softie. Unfortunately, I will honestly admit it. My pain tolerance is not as high as the average person. So I was trying to mitigate some of that post-surgical pain. And I, I'm going to be honest. I still had a lot of pain and I still have some pain now going about doing my everyday duties but I just wanted to avoid as much pain as possible and for me to do that, one way for me to do that was to go for a no drains technique. Now the way the no drains technique works is that most double incision mastectomies what happens is when the surgeon cuts, cuts below your chest 
to open that chest up and to liposuction out the rest of the chest and they staple it back in place. They take the top skin and they take the bottom skin and put them in place and then stitch over it. What that happens is that there is a bit of space between your chest muscle and the skin that the surgeon surgeon sutured over it. And like with other every other inflammatory process like surgery, there's going to be something, some fluid buildup, pus buildup, because there are neutrophils that are gonna go there where your white blood cells and release a lot of enzymes so that it fights infections, any form of infection. That's just our body's natural response. We create fluid as a form of inflammation. So when that fluid accumulates, you get a little bit of swelling and that's why you need drains. You need drains to release that fluid and it doesn't build up below your chest wall because then it's gonna be super swollen and it may even cause super bacteria complications. So that's why drains are so important. So that's why it's very important what because that chest wall is not adhered to your skin, that fluid will accumulate in that space. So how in the world do you keep that from happening? Because me as a medical student, I realized that's, that's really hard to do because there is gonna be space. You removed all the fat in that area. How do you do that? And one way to do that is to make, mitigate as less space as possible between your chest wall and your skin so that it sticks on to your body. Your skin sticks onto your body as much as possible to mitigate some of that fluid buildup. And so my surgeon explained that the sutures they use is a different type of suture with more, it, it makes more pleats of your skin when it they reattach it. So what will, your, your skin will actually look a little different after you have a no drains technique done because it'll look dimpled. There'll be little pleats of dimpling along your scar. And you can't really see that, see it that well in photos. There are a couple of YouTubers that were able to accurately display it, but it's hard to explain and it's hard to even show you in my old top surgery recovery photos because you can't see it that well, but there's there's gonna be some dimpling. There's gonna be ridges on your skin and it, it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing at first and that's something you have to um, be able to be okay with because it'll over time flatten out. Mine has flattened out and I'm at the three month mark. So it doesn't take that long for it to flatten out, but because they try to mitigate as less space as possible, that dimpling will be there in the first three months of your top surgery experience. Another thing with this really, really tight uh, stitching is that you will have a lot less range of motion because of how tight it's going to be adhered to your skin because they're trying to mitigate as less as, as, less space as possible. So for me, I had a really hard time reaching for a very very long time i think i'm at the three month mark and i'm still having trouble just raising my arms and doing things i definitely have a lot more mobility than i initially did when it, i still had those bridges but now i can honestly admit that restriction does get in the way of you doing a lot of things now just because you had a no drains technique doesn't mean that you won't have any swelling you still will have a lot i repeat a lot of swelling for your first couple of months after surgery. So drains do a really good job of actually minimizing as much swelling as possible. So if you're okay with dealing with some swelling underneath your chest for a couple of months, which is painful, I'm gonna admit, I, I have been in pain, not incredible pain, but I have been in slight annoying pain for the last three months because I didn't know drain sticking. There is going to be some fluid buildup regardless of how tight they make it. So you have to be okay with that decision. A drain technique will try to mitigate as much fluid as possible. You'll still have fluid in a drains technique, but maybe not so much as I did. However, the silver lining to that is that after about three months, all that fluid accumulation basically goes away. My chest feels amazing. I've been doing a lot of workouts and my chest looks really good on camera and I do not regret getting a no drains technique. Lastly, the biggest complication when it comes to a no drains technique is the likelihood of something called a seroma, which is that fluid I'm talking about. Some, for some people, my doctor mentioned about one in 30 of his patients that are doing the no drains technique end up developing a seroma, which means the fluid gets accumulated underneath their scar and never really goes away like mine did and like old, a lot of patients do. So one in 30 is actually a pretty high number. That's about 3%. However, the procedure to fix that is actually really easy. 
He told me all you do is you go into the office again, they take a syringe, they put that syringe into that area where there's fluid accumulation and they just draw that fluid out and that will solve the problem. So it's very, very much an easy fix. However, if you are on a budget and top surgery kind of broke the bank for you, having to deal with the seroma afterwards and also thinking about, let's say if you're an out of town patient, you have to go back and get that fluid drained. You could also go to a local surgeon and have that fluid drained. However, I think most people will prefer to go to their original surgeon and have that fluid drained is a bit of a nuisance and is not very cost effective. However, like I'll say again, it's one in 30. So if you want to take that chance, you can. And I definitely did. My on my realization for myself was that if I do pro produce this seroma, first of all, it's not that it's pretty easy to get rid of. And I was completely comfortable going to a physician at Emory, which is the main hospital system in Atlanta, Georgia because I trust the physicians there and having them just take that fluid out, but I didn't develop a seroma, so I was pretty much fine. Yeah, and you see, my scars look really good. Like, my chest looks amazing. I've been working out, so you can see a little bit of muscle build up. But here it is. This is my three month update for top surgery. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you got something out of it and learned something about the no drains technique and I hope you share it on social media so that more trans masculine people know about the risks and benefits of a no drains technique. Follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter. I'm very, very active on those sites and you get to learn more about my life as a trans person of color in medicine.